I have to give them a ton of credit for holding it together, right. not giving up. We talked about this earlier. No, woe is us. No, we'll get him next year. No, the season is over. One night after the Giants lost 40 to nothing on that same field and didn't have to endure the trauma the Jets did, the Jets kept it close, held it together, waited for their opportunity, and they took it. We, we can talk about this so many times every week. It happened with Vikings Buccaneers. Better team lets the other team hang around. And the other team eventually yeah, says finds their way. And you know, you know, you know why I'm sensitive to that concept. Yeah, right. That's exactly what Dan Reeves said to the Falcons at halftime of the 1998 NFC Championship game in Minnesota. They let us hang around, and now we're going to take it. Yeah. But that's that's what happens. Sure. You get to a point where, some point in the third quarter, maybe the fourth quarter, you think, you know, we should be like, we should be losing this game by you know 14 points, and it's close. Let's go take it. Right. And that's what the Jets did. Yeah. I, you know, I feel like there was that shock. The Bills went down and went up, what, 13 to three. And you went, oh, man, can they rebound? And like you said, credit to Robert Sala, the whole coaching staff, the team. They did rebound. And then when they got, you know, some success there and made it, what, 13 six and brought it to one score game, I felt like that was the moment the Jets were like, wait. We can do this. That We're only a score away. Our defense is awesome. And, damn, Zach Wilson and offense, if you guys could put together one more ugly drive or whatever, we'll figure out a way to get this done. The Jets, as we saw, the Jets are talented. Now, the one thing we you know we hit on Josh Allen and the mistakes there, but, but like he said, that Jet defense is going to be a top five Might defense in football. Might be the best defense they've seen right. all year. It's, it's, it's going to be right up there with the 49ers and the Cowboys. I mean, it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, Quentin, Quentin Williams is one of the, the best defensive tackles in football. We know that. Jermaine Johnson, you saw him coming off the edge like crazy last night with Jonathan Franklin Myers. The Qu Quincy Williams, Quinnen's brother, is an awesome linebacker along with C.J. Mosley. You saw the secondary, how damn good they are. They're phenomenal. They're deep. They got everything. And then, okay, the offense is not perfect, but we saw potential where you go, they got some dudes. They got Garrett Wilson. He made a star play at the end of the game to make it happen. Oh, it wasn't perfect. He was covered perfectly. Got it done. Brees Hall, you know, he's a dude. You saw that. He was unbelievable in the football game. So they got some guys that can go above and beyond what the play and the playbook asks, and that's where the Jets are dangerous, and that's where I still give them a fighting chance here to be a pain in the butt in the AFC and, and you know, be annoying and be in the conversation as we go along here. The bottom line is that should have been a loss for them, and they emerged with a win. And, you know, when we were going through the schedule, those first six games before their bye, two and four, maybe three and three, this Bills game was one that I remember looking at originally saying – it's a loss, but then as it got closer, we're thinking it's a win. But then once Rodgers gets injured, it's like, well, there goes that one, and they find a way. Yeah, That's the key, and that's the mindset that Robert Sala needs to instill in this team. We can find a way. Everything changes. We're going to react. We're going to adjust. We're going to adapt, and we're going to go. Brees Hall had that 83-yard run. They, he didn't make it to the end zone, but and it was only a field goal drive at the end of the day. But he's back. They get Dalvin Cook going. You know, when you see Brees Hall do this, Ooh. you wonder, like, did they really need to spend the money on Dalvin Cook? No offense to Dalvin Cook, but, you know, Brees Hall looking like the guy. He's the he guy. Was becoming last year yeah. before he tore his ACL week seven. Right. And that's when that team changed last year. Right. So between him and Cook, you know, they should be able to construct an offense that that scores enough points to help that D to help a right? defense yeah. that is going to be able to throttle teams not hold them to three yeah but if you can hold teams to 16 especially a team like the bills if you can hold great office offenses to 16 all you need 17 to win yeah that's right and this offense with zach wilson with Brees hall with garrett wilson with dalvin cook with cj uzama right with Alan Lazard, yeah, who had a nice play, big time play, nice play and run Maybe last play, night, one yeah, of the plays of the day, yeah, right. That's enough to get you to seventeen. Yeah, we'll hold them to sixteen. Right. Offense, can you get to seventeen? I think they can. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think you said it right. There, there's a lot to like there, and now they'll they'll formulate around Zach Wilson a little bit. But Brees Hall's the guy, as you saw right last night. And, you know, I don't think they expected him to be back this quickly. I mean, what he he just started practicing. What was it, three weeks ago? Yeah. You know, so the, the, that's where 
you know, they, I'm sure that's why the part of the Dalvin Cook process. But you saw he started the football game, first down, first run of the, the game, right? And you could see there just his size and then his speed. Like Brees Hall before his ACL, no way he gets caught. That would have been a touchdown. But he's still working his way back to getting totally 100% speed there. That's still a long way to run. That is a long way to run. And you got a ball in your hand. You're and the defensive die back's out. about 30 yards. You know, he, he, he doesn't run quite well, as far as you did. No, exactly right. And the ball, you know, people always forget. They're like, oh, I can't believe Brees Hall got caught. And I want to go, he's holding a ball. The other guy's not, you know. There's a reason they don't hold something in the 100-meter dash, you know, at the Olympics. <laughs> it makes it harder to run as fast. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think that. And then, hey, the, the only thing, and I go, you know, we got to see Zach Wilson. Can he take care of the football? His interception, of course, was very dumb last night. But, yes, does he continue to develop? And then the offensive line off of that. You know, we kind of talked. It was Jekyll and Hyde where we talked. They couldn't pass protect very well. But, damn, could they move some people off the ball in the run game? And they could be dangerous there. You know, you know, second round pick at center. Elijah Vera Tucker is an awesome guard. He's a Pro Bowl type guard. Makai Becton is a Pro Bowl type talent at tackle. And if he can stay healthy, you know, left tackle was seemed to be more of an issue more than anything last night. Uh, but yeah, there, there's certainly hope or ways I envision to go, this ain't over for the Jets. I, you know, I know Super Bowl might, you know, not be in the conversation here, but like you've said, there's a lot of good in that D, and there's some things that are, that are very bright on that offense too. Here's Robert Sala talking about Zach Wilson. I mean, it's been so gloomy for the Jets. Yeah. Let's hear Sala talking about the guy who is going to take over post Aaron Rodgers. Have a listen. I thought he was awesome. Uh, uh, he had a couple of big third down uh, throws, clutch throws to, to extend drives and uh, score points. Thought his um, command of the huddle, <clears throat> line of scrimmage. Thought he was gritty. He was all uh, created off schedule. Uh, scrambled for a big one. Um, came in the light. You know he threw the interception. Still bounced back. It didn't snowball into anything big. Um, you know we we still have a lot of faith in him. Um, you know we I think we've proven that by keeping him here and, and continuing to invest in him. And uh, excited for him and and his opportunity. And, and off we go. And. You know, this is a guy who got thrown into the fray a little prematurely. Joe Douglas told me back in May after the draft that if they had to do it all over again, they would have had a veteran that first year. It was too much of a youth movement. It was right. too much on Zach Wilson. But now this is year three. He's had a chance to reset. We thought he was going to sit for a year or two. He thought he was going to sit for a year or two, and now he's back at it. And, hey, yeah, he gets his chance. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence worked out. Trey Lance didn't. Zach Wilson, the guy taken between the two, maybe this is his time. Yeah, we'll see. You know, it's it's crazy. It's all worked out this way. You know, he made some big throws and and some gotta have it moments that were big. You know, he did move and get out of trouble a little bit. And then I thought Nathaniel Hackett called some great plays, screens at the appropriate time. You know, realizing they weren't getting a ton of time protecting Zach Wilson, all that. They did just right, and they'll continue to grow as an offense here. But I think the good thing is Zach Wilson's in a good mindset in a different place than where he was last year or even the year before. And he said that to me. I know he said that publicly as well. You know, I think like you just referenced, he was swimming in it last year to the point where he told me at the Hall of Fame game, he's like, it's like I forgot how to throw the football. That's what he said to me. He goes, because he was thinking about so much and the offense and what do I do and what do I read that I think mechanics and some of his natural God-given feel from the thing he does great, that started to get affected by the throwing. So he seems to be better in that department as well. The whole vibe is different right. now, though. Right. He's not the guy who was the, the guy. The savior. You're yeah. right. Right. And, and so there's less pressure on him. And now it's like, oh, we'll see what happens with yeah. Zach Wilson. And it's anything he does that's positive gets viewed as a plus. Yeah. With lower expectations, he could turn that. This could be the moment. We'll see. I'm rooting for the kid. Yeah. I hope it works out for yeah. him. No Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.